Welcome to Learn Create Sew. I'm excited to be with you today. It's been a while since my last video and I'm happy to share today's project, which is a quick, simple fold over Christmas stocking. Today I'm gonna to be demonstrating how to make this project using flannel, but it can be made using lots of fabrics such as cotton and fleece. This is an example of the same stocking completed in fleece. This stocking was a size extra large and the size I'm making today is a small. There is a free pattern for this project which is available on my website and is linked in the description below. The pattern is available in several different sizes, but you can select whichever size works best for you. If you enjoy today's tutorial, join us for future videos where I'll show you how to adapt this pattern. I'll show you how to make this stocking out of burlap and add embellishments. I'll also show you how to adapt the pattern to make a contrasting cuff. So if you're interested in either of those tutorials, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. But for today, let's begin with the basic construction of our little flannel stocking. Let's get started. As I demonstrate this pattern today, I'm going to be using flannel for the outside of my stocking and flannel for the inside. I also have a piece of five inch ribbon that I'm going to use for the hanging loop. And the first thing you're gonna to want to do is print out the pattern twice. You're gonna cut out the pattern once on the solid line, which will be your pattern piece for the main fabric. And then you're gonna cut it out once on the dotted line, which will be your pattern piece for the lining. You can cut them out the same size, but I find it lays just a little bit better if they're slightly different shapes. I'm gonna begin by cutting out the main fabric. I now have my fabric placed right sides together and I'm gonna check and make sure I know the direction that my fabric is going. My fabric has words printed on it, so it's gonna be really important to make sure it's going the correct direction. Uh, the top is on this end and the bottom is on this end, so I wanna make sure I position my pattern that direction when I place it on my fabric. So I'm gonna lay my pattern on my fabric and I am going to trace it. You could also use weights if you prefer. Pins are all right, but they tend to bend the fabric. So if you're using pins to hold your pattern in place while you cut, make sure that your pattern is laying flat. Repeat this process for the lining and make sure that you're using the pattern piece for the lining. I now have four stocking pieces, two for the outside of the stocking and two for the inside of the stocking. It's time to sew them together. I'm gonna to begin with the main fabric that will be on the outside of my stocking and I'm gonna sew all the way around the sides and the bottom with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna leave the top edge open. When you sew the lining together, you first want to get ready the hanging tie. Fold the ribbon for your hanging tie so that it's right side out. I'm using five inches of ribbon, but you could make this longer or shorter depending on your preference. The pattern piece indicates where the tab should be placed. It's right above the turn of the cuff. And so I'm gonna mark it with my marker here. I want to place it right there. I'm gonna make sure that my ribbon is folded. I'm also gonna make sure that my lining pieces are placed right sides together, so the right sides are touching. You also want to make sure that your ribbon is upside down. So for example, if I place it like this, now when I fold my cuff over, my ribbon will be upside down later. So place your ribbon upside down now so that it will be facing right side up later. So I'm gonna place my ribbon so that it looks like it's upside down. If your ribbon's not directional, it doesn't matter, but mine's words, so I wanna make sure they're facing the correct way. I'm gonna open up my fabric and I'm gonna place the ribbon in between the two layers. 
I'm going to line it up with the edge, make sure it's in the right spot, it is. And I'll pin this in place. And so now the ribbon will be sandwiched in between the two layers of lining fabric. Now, if you're worried about this ribbon coming loose, you can go ahead and baste it in place now. Just sew along this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew around the rest of the stocking to put the lining together. You wanna to make sure you leave an opening to turn. So I've marked here and here where my pattern piece shows, I should leave my opening. You want to make sure that the opening is on a straight location and you also want to make sure it's not in the cuff area. So you can see it's a few inches below that. So I'm gonna pin my lining together. So I'm gonna to head to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew around the sides and bottom with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving this section open. So I'm gonna start here, sew down and back stitch start here, backstitch, and go down. I'm also going to backstitch over the section with the ribbon to make sure that it's really secure. And again, I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now that the stocking is stitched together, it's time to clip the curves. We want our stocking to lay really nicely, so we're going to clip the areas where it turns to give it the space to do so. You can also trim the seam allowance in half to help reduce the bulk. You want to do this everywhere that it's curved. A real quick way to do this is to use pinking shears. Um, that's my preference, but if you don't have pinking shears, you can just do the clips with the regular scissors like I just demonstrated. Be careful not to get too close to your stitches. We now have nice clips all the way around the edge of our stocking. I'm going to repeat this process for the lining. When you clip the lining, take care not to clip in the section of your opening. That will make sewing it together quite challenging. So only trim the curved areas on the lining. This next step is optional, but if you would like to, you can press these seams open. Um, make sure that your fabric is able to be pressed. So if you're using something like fleece that can't be ironed, you can just finger press. So just place your hand in there and rub it open with your fingers to help get it secure. I'm using a sleeve roll and I'm just gonna place it inside the stocking. You can press the foot as well if you like to, but I usually just do the straight section. I'm going to be careful of my ribbon because I'm not sure if it can be pressed or not. Also in the section with my opening, I'm going to press it so that it looks like it's been sewn. So I'm going to fold it over so it looks just like the upper section. And again, before you do this, make sure that you're using a type of fabric that can be pressed. Let's put the two pieces together. Take your lining piece and turn it right side out. Place the lining inside the main fabric. This should make it so the right sides are touching. Make sure they're going the same direction so you want the foot to be pointing the same way. It's usually pretty easy to tell because your ribbon should be next to the back of the foot. Line up the seams. Make sure the seams are open. 
and pin all the way around. Next, we're gonna stitch all the way around the top opening. Um, if your sewing machine has a removable compartment in front that you can take off, it works really great if you slip you're stocking right over the edge of that free arm there and stitch that way. My machine doesn't offer that, but it's a good option if your machine does. Since this section is so small and since I don't have the removable compartment on my machine, uh, I just have to stop frequently and rearrange my fabric. Just be careful and make sure that you're only sewing through the two layers, oops, and make sure that all the other layers are out of the way. We stitch all the way around the top, and now we're going to pull the lining free and turn the whole stocking through the opening. I like to grab the toes and pull those through first. It looks kind of funny. It looks now like you've got a stocking on one end and a stocking on the other end, which you pretty much do. So go ahead and turn out the main fabric stocking fully. If you need to, you can use a turning tool like a corner turner. And if everything looks okay, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna sew the opening and the lining closed. If you don't want this to be visible, you can sew with a slip stitch, and I have a video linked below for how to slip stitch. If you don't mind the stitches showing, you can sew this on the machine using a really small seam allowance, such as 1 8 or 1 16th of an inch. You can press it flat if you like. I'm just gonna finger press it, and I'm gonna sew it on the machine. And now let's tuck the lining inside. So open up your stocking, take the left side and the right side and pull them apart, and then stuff the lining down inside. Make sure your seam is at the top. It can usually take a little bit of playing with it to make it lay just right down here in the foot. Once you've got it all tucked inside, go ahead and take the top edge and fold it over. You want to fold it to just past your hanging ribbon. Right there. And you can kind of fiddle with the fold until you get it just where you like it. If after you complete your stocking, you notice that the top of the cuff isn't staying together, here's something you can do. This wasn't necessary on cotton, flannel, or fleece, but I did find it helpful on specialty fabrics such as velvet. Go ahead and open your stocking back up and mark the cuff fold line. And then place the stocking over the free arm in your sewing machine and stitch all the way around on that cuff fold line. Um, and that will help your lining and your main fabric to stay together. And there we have our Christmas stocking. Super quick and super fun to make. And you can see that our stocking is fully lined inside. This is Learn Create Sew, and I hope you've enjoyed our tutorial today. Happy sewing and happy holidays.